What's going on guys, Greg Hitchko here, and raise your hand if you're like me and you struggle to understand how to properly set up your suspension on your dirt bike. Well, luckily for us, we've recruited the help of the Moto Experts Race Tech Suspension Specialist to help us get these bikes dialed in and handling properly for the track or trail. Stay tuned for your five best suspension setup tips by the Moto Experts. Fork height is a critical aspect for tuning, depending on the type of riding that you're doing. So when we're setting up a suspension for a specific discipline like motocross, um, we will specify a uh, fork height. Um, so on the CR, our specification is flush with the top of the tube. And what this does, the fork height will affect the rake of the bike, the cornering and its high speed stability. Um, and this is a tuning factor. So just because we specify flush, it doesn't mean that the rider um, can't make adjustments to suit his style. Um, so if you're wanting a little bit more precise cornering, you might raise the forks a line or a millimeter or two in the clamps and that will help the front end to settle. However, you might experience a little bit more of an active um, front end under high speed conditions, maybe a little more head shake. That's one of the first things we'll verify and adjust is the fork height. So this is also extremely critical. A lot of times people will over torque these lower pinch bolts. And what that does, it will create a binding in the fork. So uh, your forks consist of an outer tube and an inner tube inner and outer bushings and as those bushings slide past this area inside of the fork if this is over torqued you will experience what we call a mid-stroke harshness or a binding as those bushings go through that uh, go through that fork tube so we will torque 17 newton meter 12 newton meter um, and that's kind of the ideal torque on on all these bikes What we want to prevent happening is changing the distance between these lugs uh, once that wheel is installed. The way these lugs sit distance-wise is what we, we want that to stay the same once the wheel is in. So that's why it's critical to follow these steps when installing your front wheel, the front axle, so that you're not pulling these lugs together and creating binding in your, in your forks. Um, the same thing will happen if, the, if they're pushed too far apart. Everything will tighten to the brake side. So once we install the wheel, we'll push the axle through um, and then tighten everything to this side. And we want this lug to float on the axle. We don't want this to be bound in or out one way or the other. So we can show you that once we get that wheel installed and the axle put in here. The reason these things are so critical is because it drastically impacts the feel of the front end and the overall handling of the bike. Um, you can have the, the best settings and setup in your forks, but if these steps aren't taken, uh, it's all for nothing essentially because it will be bound up and it won't perform the way it's intended. Um, so just paying attention and taking it through these steps is going to be your uh, number one um, goal when when putting your forks back on so the compression adjuster what that is going to adjust is it'll make your the compression of the fork either softer or more firm so speeding it up or slowing it down speeding it up is more plush slowing it down a little bit more firm um, so depending on track conditions we might go in a few clicks or out a few clicks um, and then rebound will adjust the speed of the rebound so the forks re-extending after a bump in slows it down makes it more stiffer out speeds it up makes it faster compression adjustment we find up on top of the fork on these closed chamber forks um, and then the rebound is underneath on both sides um, all of our baseline settings are essentially going to be 10 clicks out on compression and 14 out on rebound um, that's pretty much middle ground uh, for the adjustment. If we have to go too far one way or another, generally that's indication that we need to make some changes internally to the settings to either give the rider some more comfort or 
um, a more plush feel or more firm, depending on his needs. The biggest thing that you can do or not do to positively or negatively impact the rear is setting your sag. Um, a lot of people have never adjusted sag and uh, you'll find that once you once you start playing with that you, you'll notice how much that will affect the geometry and the handling stability of the bike. Um, so obviously we have the correct shock springs and settings on this bike for our test riders today. Once the rider is geared up in all of his gear, we'll set the sag for him. On this bike, our sag setting is 103 millimeters. So what we're looking for is once the rider is on the bike, the bike on the ground on a level surface um, in his riding position, um, we want that to be 103 millimeters of, of sag in the rear end. Um, and that's gonna provide us with the correct geometry um, and balance on this bike. Um, so 103, if, and this is a variable that we can change. If he's wanting more high speed straight line stability, we might drop that down to 105. Um, and as well as if he wants a little bit less sag for better cornering or precise front end feel, um, you know, we might change that within a couple millimeters, um, drop it to 101 instead of 103. All right guys, so that is gonna be a wrap here today with the Moto Experts. Thanks to Kevin and Dylan coming out. And also thanks to Hayden for riding these bikes. Now this was just a very high level understanding of the five suspension setup tips for your motorcycle to get them handling properly. And if you guys want some more in-depth detail on these five, I've got five separate videos on each of the topics that you guys can go check out on the channel right now. If you guys wanna hear more about how these bikes handle and compare to each other on the track, check out part two of my throwback two-stroke garage build shootout. We ride these bikes more, we really dive deep into them and rank them one through four. So if you guys want some more awesome two-stroke content, make sure you go check out that video. But that's gonna be a wrap here up in Ogden Cycle Association in Utah. And as always guys, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.